Well, welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with the new president of Walsh University, Dr. Tim Collins. And uh, I've got to say, though, you are stepping into a very good situation. I know that your basketball team has just in the preseason polls just been said they're number one. No target on their backs or anything. I've also seen the heart for your students just recently read about opening a food pantry for fellow students. Walsh is just doing some cool things. I know we don't have much time, but let's talk about some of these amazing, cool things happening. Yeah. You're, you're, you are in an enviable situation as a new president. Right. Well, the university has maintained its focus on serving others. That's what it's there for. The brothers have been there for 59 years. Next year, the university will celebrate our 60th anniversary. Wow. And that's wow. 60 years of being in the community, and we couldn't have done that without the community, and we can't do it in the future without the community. And so we look forward to a big celebration next year and to celebrate really all the things that have been done. But the Brothers Mission has been about reaching to the periphery to where others won't go to, because we know how this experience can completely transform a life, can completely change a family, can completely change the, the arc, the trajectory of history. So some of the cool things, athletics, you know, we have tw- uh, more than 20, I'll just say that, more than 20 men's and women's athletics. We learn a lot about leadership in the athletic experience, about teamwork, about what it means to give your all, about how much can I give, what are my limits. Uh, it's a great proving ground for helping to develop that part of their leadership experience. The academics are great. Our students, you know, we focus on the global learning environment. We send students to, we have our own Rome program that we send students to for semester long, and we have multiple programs all over the world where we do short courses, short experiences. Every overseas trip we have has an academic experience component of it, so we're just not out there sightseeing. (laughs) We're doing it with purpose. We are sightseeing, but we're doing it with a purpose. (laughs) We also have, uh, right now, currently, we have 14 religious folks from the continent of Africa, from Uganda, from Tanzania that are here getting education. We know the needs in Africa are great, and we are trying to help provide an education because we know education is a key. There's nothing in this country that um, doesn't need education or training in some some form. The food pantry, which he opened on the 22nd on um, Tuesday, last Tuesday, was all about thinking about our commuter students, mm. that we think there's a need in the community for something as simple as food. But we see this in Plain Township. I mean, I don't, I don't yes. think many people know there are 100 homeless students in Plain Township. I mean, no. it's right here in our backyard. We don't even see it. We, we sponsored a walk for the not for sale organization yes. to stand up for for those that are enslaved human slavery is still alive and well unfortunately you know ohio ranks fourth in the country for this tragedy Isn't that tragic? so it was an opportunity to teach our students what it means to have convictions what it means to stand up and do something mm-hmm. So the sports is great, and, you know, there's a lot of good things there, but we're also, you know, very focused on what people need. Mm -hmm. That's what Walsh has done so, so well. When the idea, you kind of kept your finger on the pulse of the greater community of what are people wanting to go into? What are they being called into? Let's offer them that. Right. And developing new programs like physical right. therapy and, and so forth. Occupational therapy yes. and the museum studies and all that. You know, one of the, there's three main differences with a Catholic approach to higher education, which the Catholic Church invented this in 1088. So we're 932 years into universities and colleges. And one of these three tenets is this idea that we think that life has a purpose. And so part of the education and formation at Walsh University is to help them to discover their purpose. Because in the end, we're trying to teach our students that the idea is not to accomplish something. It's to be somebody. Oh, say that and again, so please. The, the purpose of what they're doing is not to accomplish something, but it's to be somebody. Mm-hmm. And so we teach them, we think we're focused very much on teaching them how to think not what to think. Mm. And so you marry that with service. You know, every one of our students, Susie, has a community service requirement. They all do internships. They all serve in the community. The uh, football team, I think, last year in NCAA Division II were ranked second in the nation for community service. That's amazing. Our football team. Yeah, that's awesome. So it is more than just academics. So the intellectual life is important to us, of course, 
but so is the physical development, so is the intellectual development, emotional, social, uh, spiritual. It all it all matters. It's a whole person approach. We also always read in the springtime, uh, around spring break time, when, you know, we all remember spring break, Walsh students are doing service around service, the world. During mission, sp- right. Yes. In Haiti and, you know, other places around the world. They're in West Virginia. They're building houses. They're trying to give back. And this is all we think is part of a necessary part of building leaders in mm-hmm. service. It is a values-based education. It is about a Judeo-Christian trend. Uh, tradition, which, you know, Christ called this the way. And what he meant by that was there is a way of life. And we're trying to teach them here is a way of life, how Mm -hmm. to serve others while you're taking care of your families. And we do believe our lives are big enough that you can do your job, you can take care of your family and serve your community. So good. I know it's only been a couple of months, but tell me about the students at Walsh. They rock. The students (laughs) rock. So we have 2,600 of them. We have about 1,000 that are in the dormitories, in the residence halls, plus all of our commuter population. And then we had our online, our graduate graduate students on top of that. So we're educating at all levels of higher education. And the students themselves, they come from all over the world. We have 34 countries that are represented. Most of them are from the state of Ohio, but they're from all over Ohio. They come from all walks of life. They come from those that are in the most um, needs. Um, situations where, you know, college is very difficult. Their first generation, low income student is very popular on our campus, and that is totally consistent with the mission of Walsh for 60 years, which is a 200-year mission for the brothers. So, but we also have, you know, just some exceptionally bright, bright students. So starting next year, we are going to have a national merit scholarship available. So we're going to bring some national merit students onto our campus, into our environment. We have some now, but we just didn't, weren't participating in the national program. So we've changed that. We've also are expanding our yellow ribbon program for our military, for our veterans. You know, we have 38 students right now that are on campus using their GI Bill. They've, they've gone off, they've served, they've decided they need to go back to college and they come on. And, you know, they're students that understand what values mean. They understand service. They've done that themselves. And so part of this narrative in, in the um, higher education space is also this narrative that college is for everyone. Well, I don't believe that that's true. College is not for everyone. There's a lot of great, tremendously important work that has to be done that does not require a college education. So why would we send people there when that's not for them? And it's for different stages of life. It's, you know, you can go to college anytime. You don't have to go to college just because you graduate. So I know that the the school systems here focus a lot about trying to put the students on a path. What is the right path for you? Mm -hmm. It might be college. It might be Votech. It might be community college. It might be military service. It might be AmeriCorps. It might be Peace Corps. It might be whatever. Um, But it's recognizing that we all have different talents, different experiences, different needs, different things that will make us happy. So how do we accommodate that and and adjust to the fact that that is a reality. Each student, which is what I love most about Walsh, I can know the students, like I can know the staff and the faculty mm-hmm. by name. Yes. We're just that small. There's no numbers there. Uh, the students, they know where I live. I can sometimes, you'll find me on campus. They're trying to make their way to 8 o'clock class, and there's one spot on campus. They can't get to class without going by me. <laughs> and so they try to walk around me, and I call them out on that. So. <laughs> Um, it is the kind of place, it is a family, it's, it's a large family, um, but it's a place where our students are why we come to work, that's who mm-hmm. we're there for. Um, it's also a place, though, for the faculty and staff to grow and bloom where they are in giving back and helping those students. So the development of the staff and faculty is every bit as important as student success. And in our final minutes, tell me about that faculty and staff. Yep, so we have about 400 faculty and staff. They come from all over as well. So we have them international staff, we have local staff. Many of them, of course, were raised right here. So they know Ohio like nobody, which is great when you're trying to provide services for students on how to figure out. Sometimes, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And so and that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. And so our faculty and staff, they leverage that all the time in trying to help help the students. 
And for these students that are from international, they don't always get to go home over the holidays or the fall breaks. So our faculty and staff, they step right in. They they jump in and they help them. Part of the food pantry that just opened, it's a freshman project. The freshmen decided to take this on as a class project. But we had faculty and staff that were kind of working on this individually. And so the students, they got everybody together. Who's involved? How big is this? And then they solved the problem. 27 days. That's incredible. By the time the freshmen decided they needed to do this till we cut the ribbon. Less than a month. Less than a month, which people say in higher ed, nothing happens in less than a year. Uh, yeah, those wheels <laughs> move kind of slowly in my experience. Yeah, but if you get out of the way of students, it'll happen fast. Isn't it that seems cool? to be the adults that slow this down. <laughs> the students are not interested because they're on a four year clock. Yeah, that's it. You know, and their freshman year is only eight or nine months. So they have to make this happen right now. How do so we get from here to here? Let's go. Let's do it now. Oh, that's let's so do awesome. It. Well, of course, our time would be fleeing, and uh, there's just so much more we would. Can we get you to say you'll come back? Yeah, thank you. And, you know, thank you very much to the entire community for 59 years now of supporting Walsh University. We're privileged to be here in the community, and we look forward to another 60 years, which we'll be celebrating next year. So I hope to see everyone on our campus to help celebrate with us Oh, count on it. Walsh University President Tim Collins, thank you for relocating to our community. Thank you for having us.